Hello everyone and welcome to section 5.2 on congruent polygons. In this lesson we're going to identify and use corresponding parts. So what exactly is a corresponding part? It is a pair of sides or angles that have the same relative position and two congruent figures. I have two congruent figures down here, triangle ABC and triangle DEF. And the corresponding angles are angles that are congruent to each other. So even though these two pictures aren't lined up to look exactly the same, angle A and angle D are still the same measure as you can see through their markings. So angle A is congruent to angle D. If you look at the angle B, it has three markings and so does angle E. So angle B and angle E are congruent to each other as are angle C and angle F. We can do the same thing with sides. If we look at the markings on uh, side length BC, it's the same as that on EF. So BC is congruent to EF. And then we can look at a, a side length AB. AB has two markings, as does side length DE. So AB is congruent to DE. And finally, AC is congruent to DF. These markings or notation up here are known as congruence statements. So in this example we're about to do, it's asking us to write some congruence statements for the triangles given below. So I'll leave those up there so you can refer to those as to what we're talking about. The example says to write a congruence statement for the triangles, identify all pairs of congruent corresponding parts. The first thing we're going to do is write that congruent statement for the triangles. Let me title that triangle so you know the difference between all of them. And I'm going to name this top triangle P, M, N. I'm going to go from the single marking, double marking, triple marking for the angles. So we have triangle P, M, N is going to be congruent to Z, Y, X single marking, double, triple. So triangle Z, Y, X. Now we will name our corresponding angles. And angle Z and angle P both have one marking, so those two are congruent to each other. So angle P is congruent to angle Z. Going to the two marks, we have M is congruent to Y, so angle M is congruent to angle Y. And lastly, angle N is congruent to angle X. Now to do the side lengths. The marking on the top triangle with one mark is MN. So line segment MN is congruent to YX. And notice that on this top triangle, I started with the vertice that has two marks and went up to the one with three marks. So I want to do the same thing on the bottom triangle. That's why I listed Y first and X second. Now let's move on to N and P. So I'm going from three markings to one, and then we're going to be congruent to X, Z. So N, P is congruent to X, Z. And then lastly, we have P, M will be congruent to Z, Y. The next example I have for you takes it a little bit further because now we're going to actually solve for variables and we have to line up our shapes so that we know what angles are congruent to each other because they don't tell us in this picture. So if you're ever unsure, take a piece of pad paper, trace one of your figures and mark the angle measures, and then rotate it, reflect it, onto the other figure. Now sometimes when they're photocopied, they don't line up exactly, but they're pretty darn close. So for this one, angle G is my top right, which lines up with angle P. And then I have D lines up with Q, E lines up with M, and finally, my angle F lines up with angle N. So now I can see that this angle is 68 degrees, because I have that there, 
G is 84, so P is 84 degrees, D is 102 degrees, and E is our unknown one here. This one's blank. Part A is asking us to find the value of x. In the picture, I have two equations. This one involves both x and y, and this one just involves x. Now, I didn't write down the side lengths when I wrote down my congruent angles, but if we take a look, this is MQ, and on our pre-image, it's ED. So if I look at ED, ED is 8 feet and mq is x minus 2. So if this is 8, then 8 needs to equal x minus 2. Solve for x, add 2 to both sides, and we get x equals 10, or x equals 10 feet, because the unit is feet. Part b is asking us to solve for y. Now, this equation is the only one that has y in it, so we can say that 84 degrees equals 3x plus 2y degrees. We know our value for x is 10 feet, so let's go ahead and substitute in 10 for x. We will get 84 equals 3 times 10 plus 2y. 84 equals 30 plus 2y. Subtract 30 from both sides. We get 54 equals 2y, still solving for y, so we need to divide both sides by 2, and we will get y equals 27. Some properties of triangle congruence are the following, and these terms probably sound familiar to you because you were probably introduced to them in algebra, and I'm actually going to give examples that relate back to algebra, which is something you're more familiar with and a little bit less complicated than stating all these letters that do with, deal with triangles. This says triangle congruence is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. Reflexive, for any triangle, triangle ABC, it says ABC is congruent to triangle ABC. In the algebra world, think of when you learned about 2 being equal to 2. That was a reflexive statement, or x equals x. You also learned about symmetric, and that says if triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, then triangle DEF is congruent to triangle ABC. In other words, if y equals 3, then 3 equals y. Transitive, if triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF and DEF is congruent to JKL, then triangle ABC is congruent to triangle JKL. This one's really complicated because there's a lot of letters going on. But if we break it down to something, again, that you're more familiar with in the algebra world, if we said that uh, A equals 4 and 4 equals B, then we can say that A equals B. So this is saying if, this tri if one triangle is congruent to another and that triangle is congruent to a third one, then the first triangle has to be congruent to that third triangle as well. The last theorem we're going to get into for this section is called the third angles theorem. And that says if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the third angles are also congruent. If you relate this back to the triangle sum theorem that says the sum of the interior angles of a triangle are 180 degrees, then if we know 180 minus this angle A minus angle B gives us this third angle measure, this has to be the same as angle F over here because B and E are the same measure, A and D are the same measure, and if the interior angles are all 180 degrees, then angle C has to be congruent to angle F. Let's apply some of these properties and the theorem and a proof. Everyone's favorite thing, proofs. The more you see and the more you do, the easier they become.
So just bear with it. You'll get it. it. Takes time. In this example, we are asked to use the information in the figure to prove that triangle WXYZ is congruent to triangle ZVY. I'm going to do a two column proof for this one. First thing I'm going to do is state my given information and I'm going to list all three corresponding side lengths that are congruent to each other in this first statement. So I'll say that side length WX is congruent to side length ZV. I have WY is congruent to ZY and XY is congruent to ZY. And these are all given for our reason because they're marked in the picture. The second thing I'm going to say, I know that angle X and angle V are right angles. This is also marked in the picture so we can say that is given. The third thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to essentially take those words right angles and since they're both right angles they have to be congruent to each other. So angle X is congruent to angle V and that's because all right angles are congruent. Next I'm done with all of the given information that's marked on this picture so I need to figure out other things. We have two lines on this picture that intersect. Once we have intersecting lines the, the angles, the non-adjacent angles are congruent to each other. So angle WYX is congruent to angle ZYV. Let's go ahead and write that down, that angle WYZ is congruent to angle ZYV and that is because of our vertical angles congruent theorem. So now we have these angles are congruent to each other and then so we know this is 90 degrees this is some angle measure so 180 minus 90 minus this has to give us this third angle and the same holds true to give us angle Z. So angle W is congruent to angle Z because of that third angle theorem Therefore, lastly, we can say that triangle WXY is congruent to triangle ZVY. Because now we have, let me mark up this last angle, we have all angles are congruent and all side lengths are congruent. So the two triangles have to be congruent to each other. Our reason for that will be all corresponding parts are congruent. That completes the lesson on section 5.2, congruent polygons, where you learned about identify corresponding angles and corresponding sides. You learned about your congruent statements and then we worked on a proof applying some of the properties for re of our triangles that include the reflexive, symmetric, and transitive properties. Thanks for listening and I will talk to you in the next lesson.